Okay, this, uh, this little flow chart is called the geometric family tree, although our focus is quadratics. So I'm going to write this up here. Focus quadratics. Sorry, sorry, quadrilaterals. Not quadratics, quadrilaterals. So focus is on quadrilaterals. So I'm going to zoom in here, hopefully, to talk about each one of these shapes. So a polygon, and um, we're going to make a little thing calling a convex polygon. So a convex polygon is just basically any shape that has straight sides, like so. Um, a concave polygon, which we're not talking about, just so you know, though. Concave polygon would be one that has a side. One of the sides could go in like that. But we're not talking about that. Nope. But convex polygons, any number of sides. Okay, now a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral is just a four-sided figure. And again, we're talking about convex four-sided figures. So four-sided figure. And with the four-sided figure, we have a lot of different types of four-sided figures. Okay, we have a kite, which is a special type of four-sided figure. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. And we're just going to talk about all the different um, types of four-sided figures here. And I just want you to put on your notes, you know, draw this on your, on your uh, worksheet here. So a kite, draw one, you know what a kite looks like, right? Something like this. So a kite has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. What just that means is that, see how these sides are consecutive, they're in a row, <clears throat> and they're equal, and then these are equal. Okay. Um, and a few interesting notes about a kite is if you create the diagonals, very similar to a kite, the diagonals, um, first one diagonal bisects the other. So I'm going to put a little three here. Those two sides are equal. Okay, but notice that these are not equal. Okay, they could be, but once they become equal, we're starting to talk about a different type of shape. So a kite, the diagonals, one side bisects the other. And then we also have that they form a right angle in there. So that is a right angle in the middle. So I would say you could say diagonals are perpendicular. I'm going to use some shorthand here. Diagonals are perpendicular. And that the diagonals, so how about this? One diagonal bisects the other. And I probably won't write all the little things because there's a lot of little things here. Um, for example, these angles down here, even though I drew it poorly, they're equal. And the angles up here are equal. But notice these angles here and here are not equal. And just kind of use your intuition here. Like these angles here, for example, are equal. And these angles are equal. These triangles are congruent. And these triangles are congruent. So there's a lot of symmetry here in a kite. Finish that. 
All right, we got a few shapes to go here. Let's go with the trapezoid. A trapezoid has one pair parallel sides. So for example, it could be something like, draw it like this. You see that these sides are parallel. Okay, you can also draw it, and you can even draw a right trapezoid. Something like that. As long as you have one pair of parallel sides. Not a whole lot to do with the trapezoid in terms of, there's not a whole lot of symmetry in the trapezoid. Oh, if I made that right, I probably should put a little right angle here. Okay. Now I saw Slee's trapezoid. I saw Slee's trapezoid would be something that has these legs is what they're called. And these are the type of trapezoids we usually see where you have our parallel bases. These are called the bases. And then these legs are equal. Now, once you start dealing with that, with an isosceles trapezoid, you end up having congruent angles here. You have congruent angles here. Um, you also have that these two angles, let's kind of do this. Those two angles add to 180. These two angles add to 180. So there's some more symmetry when it becomes isosceles. Um, there's one, one other thing about trapezoids, and this is true for all trapezoids. So it's true for for both isosceles trapezoids and regular trapezoids, or non-isosceles, I should say. Let's look at this. I'll just zoom in right here. If we draw a midline, and a midline basically is this. It's a line that's parallel to both of the bases. It breaks these in half, so the, each of the legs in half. The length of the midline is the average of the bases. So for example, if this height here, oh, let's make it easy. If that's 8 and the bottom is 10, that means our midline would have to be 9. It's in the middle. It's the average of the bases. And it works for every trapezoid. Sometimes they call it the mid-segment, by the way, a mid-segment of a trapezoid. So something like this. If this uh, top here is a five, and this is a, I don't know, let's go, um, let's make it easy, 15. And then halfway between five and 15 is 10. So those are trapezoids. Let's jump into a quadrilateral. We've got a lot of stuff here with quadrilaterals. So for example, a parallelogram shaped like this, right? Definition of a parallelogram is two pairs of parallel sides. Um, few ideas here. Opposite sides are congruent. So those are parallel. I mean, they're parallel, obviously. That's the definition. So these are parallel. But they're also congruent. So we put opposite sides congruent shorthand. Okay, also the 
opposite angles are congruent. So again, opposite, whoa, that's off. Opposite angles are congruent. Let's use a different color here. I use yellow very often. And also, the diagonals, they bisect each other. So basically, they cut each other into equal shapes. Sorry, equal lengths. So diagonals bisect each other. And then once you start going into that, again, we have a lot of symmetry here. So for example, this triangle and this triangle are, equal, are congruent triangles. These triangles are congruent, so they're equal. Um, this angle down here and this angle up here are equal because of uh, transversal, alternate interior on a transversal. But also think about these triangles are equal, they're congruent, so that's why. So there's a lot of symmetry in, in the parallelograms. Okay, so that should be most of the parallelogram stuff. So let's look at another shape. Let's go to a rectangle. So everybody should know what a rectangle is. They, ooh, I know what it is, I can't draw it. So let's try this again. So a rectangle is a parallelogram. That's what the flow chart is showing us. Um, in fact, let's go to the flow chart really quick here. So what it's saying here is that from the quadrilateral, you can go to a parallelogram, which is two pairs of parallel sides, or you can go to a trapezoid, which is only one pair of parallel sides, which means that trapezoids and parallelograms you know, aren't the same at all. And the kite doesn't have any parallel sides, but it has congruent sides. So out of the parallelogram, a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. A rhombus is a type of parallelogram. There are two different types of parallelograms. And then this just means that a rhombus and a rectangle, they end up getting married and then they have a little square because a square is both the rhombus and the rectangle. So let's go back into my rectangle here. So rectangle is a parallelogram, which means that all of the, I'll try to go like that, there we go. So all of these characteristics from a parallelogram also apply to a rectangle. So I'm not going to talk about how the opposite sides are equal or, you know, incongruent or how the opposite sides are parallel because that's already because of the parallelogram. So all those still happen. But the rectangle is a special type of parallelogram because it has four 90 degree angles or congruent angles. So four congruent 90 degree angles. Okay. And then on top of that, if we draw the diagonals, it's a parallelogram, so remember the diagonals bisect each other, but we also have that the diagonals are congruent. So this length here, this length here is the same as this length here. So I'll write that down over here. Diagonals are congruent, and therefore it should kind of make sense that since these di two diagonals are congruent, when it bisects, all four of those little pieces there are congruent. And that kind of makes up the rectangle. And, you know, I don't want to gloss over this fact that these are for the rectangle, but these would also be for the rectangle because the parallelogram works there. 
Okay, let's jump over to a rhombus. Now what's a rhombus? Instead of having four equal congruent angles, a rhombus has four equal congruent sides. And usually when you draw a rhombus, it looks like it's similar to a diamond. In fact, I remember my son's first grade classroom had a picture of, of this shape on the wall and it's a diamond. And I was thinking, why not just call it a rhombus because that's what you're gonna have to do, learn anyways. So what a rhombus has is it has four congruent sides. Notice how the angles are not equal. And I want to take this parallelogram in the picture because it's still a parallelogram. It still has all those ideas. But it has four congruent sides. Okay, and again, it's going to have opposite sides are congruent. Well, yeah, they're all four of them are. Opposite angles are still congruent. These would be congruent, and those would be congruent. The diagonals bisect each other, still holds true. But if I draw the diagonals now, you can kind of see, my drawing's a little bit sketchy, but you can kind of see that the diagonals are perpendicular. So the diagonals are perpendicular. <coughs> Excuse me. So this makes actually four right triangles. And also, and this is the interesting one, the diagonals bisect the angles. So write this down. Diagonals, how about this? R, angle, that's a bad angle sign. Angle bisectors. So what that means is if I zoom in here, what that means is that these angles are cut, that angle is cut in half and are equal to these angles down there, cut in half. And then these angles are congruent to these angles. So rhombus has a lot of special sides, or properties, sorry, properties. And again, it's a type of parallelogram. So all of these occur for all of these down below. Okay, so last one here is a square. We all know what a square is. And a square is basically gonna have all of these characteristics. All these characteristics are at once. So let's try, let's draw these characteristics. So a square, let's make the square green. Square is a rectangle and a rhombus, four equal sides, four right angles, that's what makes a square. So I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna put is a rectangle and rhombus for congruent sides, for congruent angles. Um, and then the same things apply from everything else above, which is opposite sides are equal, which should make sense. Opposite angles are equal, should make sense. Diagonals, they bisect each other. They're equal. They form a right angle which makes it really interesting in terms of these four triangles that are formed. They're all equal, they're all congruent. These angles down here are bisected, which means that this 90 degrees makes two 45s here. So each one of these triangles here is a 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And then you can use all of the characteristics from above. 
and there wouldn't be any additionals. So that's the idea of this quadrilateral family tree, this geometric family tree. Um, something that should be said is you can use this to talk about um, statements of all sometimes. So for example, you could say all squares are parallelograms because it's below here. All rectangles are parallelograms. All rhombus are parallel parallelograms. Okay, when they're on different parts here, different branches, no trapezoids are rhombus because trapezoids only have one pair, rhombus have two pair. They're not the same at all. No kites are rectangles. No kites are rhombus because they're a little bit tricky actually because there could be a, a kite that looks similar to a rhombus, but typically a kite you would say is not you wouldn't have all four of them equal. So you'd say no kites or rhombus. All squares are both rectangles and rhombus. Now, some rectangles could be rhombus. That's only if it's a square. If it's a square, then a rectangle is also a rhombus. All parallelograms are quadrilaterals because they're just below it. Now, if it's above it, you could say something like some quadrilaterals are parallelograms. Some trapezoids are isosceles. Some of these trapezoids have equal legs. But all isosceles trapezoids are trapezoids. So just think about this in terms of when we're looking at the other, um, there's some other worksheets that talk about or ask questions like that. And think about, are all parallelograms quadrilaterals? Yes. Are all parallelograms polygons? Yeah. Are all rectangles trapezoids? No. That's false. You get the idea there. All right, um, hope you learn something here in the geometric family tree. Um, if you're working on this for my class, just make sure you write all these notes down on the geometric family tree when you turn it in.